So welcome back to another crochet tutorial with Cozy Rosy UK and today I'm showing you how to crochet the alternating spikes square. This is an incredibly dense crochet stitch and that creates these wonderful mini V's all the way up and down this square. In fact I think they look like little croissants. I really think they look tasty. So before we get started, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and of course the notification bell so that you never miss out on another one of my crochet tutorials again. This is going to be another one of our granny squares that are being released as part of the hodgepodge blanket crochet along. You can find the written pattern linked below in the description box and of course you can find a link to see all the granny squares that are being featured in this event. If you've missed out on any of them, don't worry, some of them are super super quick. This one takes a little while to stitch up because it's such a dense fabric, but it really is beautiful. So let's find out those materials we need to crochet the alternating spikes square. So if you're making an 8 by 8 inch square to take part in the hodgepodge blanket crochet along, you're going to need any Aran or worsted weight yarn. I'm continuing to use my paint box yarn Simply Aran, which is a size 4 yarn and has a recommended hook size of 5 millimetres. I'm using shade number 242, which is T Rose, and I do have my corresponding hook size of 5 millimetres. This is my furls. You can tell how well loved it is because <laughs> the, um, well... I really do love it and I use it pretty much for every single one of these squares. You are going to need, of course, a pair of scissors and a little darning needle to weave in all of those ends. So gather all of those materials and we'll get started. So the alternating spikes square is worked in rows. So we're going to start by making our chain. Once you've made your slip knot and pop that onto your hook, we're going to make a chain of 26. So we yarn over and pull our hook through the loop on our hook 26 times. So make your chain of 26 and I'll see you in the moment for the rest of row one. Once you have your chain of 26, we're gonna start by working one single crochet into the second chain from hook. So this loop on our hook does not count. There is our first chain and here is our second one. So we're just gonna insert our hook to bring up a loop, yarn over and pull through two and then we work one single crochet into each stitch across. So by the end of row one, you're going to have a stitch count of 25. So continue to work one single crochet into each chain across and I'll meet you at the end of row one. So at the end of row one, you should have a stitch count of 25 single crochets. We're going to go straight into row two and we're going to begin working our spike stitches. So we start by making a turning chain of one and that does not count as a stitch. We're going to single crochet into the same stitch as our chain one. And then we're going to work into the base of the previous stitch we've worked. So if we were working into this single crochet, we'd be inserting a hook underneath these two loops. Instead, we're going to work into this space underneath. So we just insert the hook into the base of the stitch in the previous row and then work, bring up our loop, making sure we're not working too tightly. So you want to bring your hook back up to the height of your row and then yarn over to complete your single crochet as normal. We're then going to work into the next stitch as a normal standard single crochet. We're then going to repeat our spike stitch, working into the base of that single crochet from the row before. So you just insert your hook, bring your loop up to the height of the row that you're working, then yarn over and pull through two as normal. We're going to repeat that working one single crochet, followed by one spiked single crochet all the way across. And we should end on a single crochet in our last stitch. We'll work a few more together so that you're happy. So the next stitch is going to be a single crochet, followed by a spike inserting your hook into the base of that stitch from the previous row and then a single crochet followed by a spike. These spikes are nice and small. I know that some people found the spikes in the spiked granny square a little bit too big um, and were concerned about them being t uh, caught on fingers and toes. Well this one certainly won't be. It's a really nice tight stitch. So continue to repeat that and I'll meet you at the end of row two. So I'm just working my last single crochet into the top of that first stitch that we made into our chain. 
and I just want to show you that mine's curly too if yours is curly and that's more to do with tension than anything else we should be able to lay it flat pretty much but there is I've got a whole <laughs> I've got a massive article on my blog about how why crochet curls and actually I'm going to pop a link to it here just to kind of reassure you because single crochets worked in rows are notorious for curling when you first start your project and unless it's really really tight curl like something that's looking like that Actually, it's just the way that this project's going to start. So I just want to reassure you not to worry if your crochet is curling at the moment. We're going to go into row three. So we chain one. And then we single crochet into the same stitch as our chain one. We're going to start our stitch repeat, which means we're going to work one single crochet. And then we're going to spike into the next stitch. So this is where we need to make sure we're working into the correct place. So again, we've got that stitch at the top where we'd normally work and actually we're going to insert our hook underneath that stitch. So it's not into the stitch, but actually underneath it. Bring your loop up, make sure that it's not too tight and then pull through two, just as you would normally. Single crochet into the next, spike into the row below for the next one. So continue to repeat that all the way across and I will meet you at the end of row two. So at the end of row two, we have to spike into that last stitch, which is fine, but it's just in case you thought we should end on a normal single crochet. So at the end of row two, you can see that this texture is really starting to show up. And if you look up really close, you can see the different heights of stitches. So we have a spike stitch, spike stitch, and they're actually one row out from each other. So there's the spike stitch in the row we've just worked and there's the spike stitch in the row below. We're going to continue to repeat rows two and three until our square reaches the height that we need. So if you're making an eight inch square, for instance, um, you may need as many as a total of 38 rows. So it might feel that you need to do an awful lot of um, rows for this pattern. But remember, the looser your stitches, the less rows you'll need to do. So try not to crochet too tightly. And this one is great for making up in front of the TV which is exactly what I'm going to go and do and finish my square in front of the TV today. So keep repeating rows two and three until you've reached that height of eight inches. Don't forget, if you need a reminder, you can click on the timestamps below to repeat those rows again so that you're comfortable with what you're stitching up. So I've just finished my 38th row and I wanted to show you just how stunning these spikes look and how easy they are to count the rows. So you've got these alternating spikes. So it is quite a closed stitch, but if you need to count your rows, which you probably will do, because there's quite a lot of them, it's easier to have it kind of flat. So obviously it's a bit hard to show you, but there's one, two, three, four, five, six. So it's kind of easier to count the alternating spikes. Or you can do two, so there's number one, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. So they're very, very close numbers of rows so it's a very very dense fabric it's really great for those hard wearing projects and that kind of thing now i'm not going to be adding an edging to this square because they are in single crochet rows but what i am going to do is just fasten off and get these ends woven in but i want to say thank you so much for joining me for this square i know it probably felt a little bit of a long one to stitch up because those rows are so tight. I am gonna to have to block mine. I've got a bit of curling going on, but that is perfectly normal for something that's such a tight stitch. So thank you so much for joining me for this crochet tutorial as part of the HodgePodge Blanket Crochet Along. I'll be back tomorrow with another granny square for you, and I'm looking forward to seeing you then.